Um, the metal one, the metal person who had the clothes on, he couldn't get over the get over the tree because it was the heavy crosshair and it was rigid, and the and it was kind of like heavy and tough and strong. He couldn't get out because it's metal and it's it's hard to get over. Mummy couldn't um, couldn't um, cross the cross cross the river because um, she had some bandages which was absorbent. <laughs> My favorite bit was at the end when she won the race. This program is about using primary science lesson starts in different ways in the classroom. You can download these and other science clips from the Teachers TV website. At Churchfield Primary School in London, Kelly Malcolm is using the cross-country starter with her Year 4 class to get them thinking about practical applications of materials. So think about the materials that, those that they're wearing. Think about the materials. The mummy's the first of the line with Sarah. <laughs> Based on that video, I've got a little task for you. I've been approached by Betty. Betty wants a new design for a coat for this dog. Okay? Now, imagine a little dog like this. Okay? She has lots of little cute dogs like this. And she wants a lovely new coat for this dog. But she's looking for something in particular. So I presented them with um, like an advert or a problem, really. Um, Betty has a pooch parlour and she's looking for a new winter coat for the dogs that are taking long journeys. Just holding it. Well, holding it to tell you if something's tough or not. What could you actually do to the material to see how tough it is? Right. I gave them some time in their groups to discuss how they might use those materials to design the best winter coat for this dog. Well, they, they might have to put a different colour. Anyone know what we call this instrument? Pipette, a pipette. You can take the water in and you can squirt it out. So you could use a pipette to put water onto it. That's a good way of testing out if it's waterproof or not. My main objective in the lesson was for children to um, collect evidence in a range of contexts to test an idea. And I always use the skills-based objectives in science lessons because the idea is that we're moving away from content-based learning to skills-based now. Okay, I would like everybody to stop now. You could use the rock and scratch it and see if it breaks, or you can rip it and see how easy it rips. OK, so you're scratching the rock against different materials to see if it's tough or ripping it. That's a really, really good idea, Jordan. Well done. How about if it's flexible? Right. I'm At Elmbridge Junior School in Gloucester, teacher Sarah Mackey is using the same clip to get her Year 3 class to look at the scientific processes. OK. All right, what I'd like you to do now is I want you to go and sit back down in your groups in a moment when I tell you, and I just want to ask you a few questions about what you've seen on that clip, OK? What do you think affected they're running. We watched the clip to see the challenge and to see the problems that the, the runners encountered during their race. Um, I then asked the children to go back to their tables and then we, I tried to get the children to generate ideas as to the problems that might have affected the runners. Any other ideas? The mummy was slowing down because the water was absorbing into the... Excellent. Well, what word paper. did Joe just use? Excellent. Well done. What was your word, Joe, you just used? Absorbing. Absorbing. What was it absorbing? Into the bandages which will make him heavy. Right. Excellent. You've had some brilliant ideas there. OK. And what we're going to do this afternoon is we're going to carry out a fair test on the three materials that were worn by the contestants. In order to make our test fair, what do we need to make sure they are? J um, Jacob? They're the same size. Okay. I then went um, through a step-by-step -step process of um, 
showing the children how to test the materials um, for absorbency. And we've written all the materials down on where it says material and we've written where, where it's all the results. The sweatshirts at where it's all the most because when we took it out it, we had 180 millilitres left. I think anything that puts um, learning into an everyday context um, is, is really effective and um, it was creative and it gave, something, gave the children something to relate to. This man is stuck on a deserted island and he needs to make clean water quickly and fast because it's kind of de dehydrated. And all he has is a couple of items with him and he wants to drink some water, but the sea water was too salty. In that clip, you see Robinson Crusoe. He's been stranded on a desert island. What can you tell me were the problems with the water? He scooped up a big cup of water and he put it to his lips. And it didn't taste very nice. What was the matter with it, Ollie? Salt crystals in it. The idea of today's lesson wasn't so much the solution to the problem, but it was those it was using those thinking skills, using their knowledge, applying that to a problem without an end, essentially. You pour the beaker into another beaker and then all the water should drain through and most of the sanding bricks should come out and the water should be clean. I gave each group, groups of about three or four, a selection of equipment um, that would represent um, the equipment that Robinson Crusoe himself had. So they had beakers and stones and um, shirt fabric that they would be able to filter with if they wanted to, and gave them very much a free reign on how to solve the problem. Everybody did the filtering. Obviously, the more able children realised that plastic is impermeable and you cannot filter through it, and that the less able children, they investigated it and sort of were relearning perhaps things that they already knew. I would like you to watch the end of the clip. All right, see what Robinson Crusoe did. He was stranded on this desert island and he wanted, needed something to drink. So, uh, what he did, he got his stick and he digged uh, through the sand. He put the water in first and he put the beaker over it. And then he put cling film over the top and put a stone in the middle so it would evaporate. And then, because of the stone, it was making a kind of dent in the middle. It would drip down into the bottle. So when he drank it, it was cleaner. Without the clip, I would have just done the same experiment. However, it would have just been a very simple science experiment where I would have allowed the children to investigate the separation of sand, salt and water, but without the interesting context. Back in London, Kate Holland is using the Water Water Everywhere clip to teach her Year 6 science class using musical instruments in a cross-curricular lesson. My lesson objectives were to explore, investigate and exploit sounds to create a soundscape, um, using the science video as a kind of stimulus for that. This morning we're going to be exploring, selecting and combining a range of different sounds to compose a soundscape. Does anybody know what a soundscape is? You have to make sound in what you see, like here. Yeah, you need to think about what you can hear and what you can see. We're going to link our music and our science together today. And in science lessons, we've been looking at the water cycle, haven't we? OK, who can explain some parts of the water cycle using some really key vocabulary? It evaporates. It evaporates, so when the water is heated by the sunshine, it evaporates. The children um, recapped on their scientific knowledge, um, watched the film and then from there um, thought about the sounds that matched the physical processes that they saw in the video. Water vapour. Water vapour, or into a, a gas, okay, into a gas. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to play you this clip 
I want you to all to listen and watch carefully. If you turn over your sheets on the other side, there's some key things that I would really like you to do while you're watching this. We used the um, musical instruments and I produced a sheet that had a kind of a flow chart, a flow diagram on there so they could order the sequence of um, this, like the processes that were happening. What I'm going to do then is give you, I would say, 15 minutes, okay, 15 minutes in your groups to explore all of these sounds. So what we're going to start with, what we're going to start with and what's going to go all the way through, what's going to go all the way through, Gary? The, the sound of the sea. The sound of the sea, and that'll continue in the background all the way through. Okay, then what's going to start happening? What's going to start happening, boys at the back? The sun. The sun is start, going to start beaming, okay? Should we give it a little go? Yeah. Okay, you need to watch me really carefully. So I'm going to be like the conductor. One, two, three, four. I wanted them to see the, to recognise the, the way that the different particles move in the different states. Um, I wanted them to think a little bit deeper so that their understanding was better of the, the physical changes that were occurring that they could see in the film. And a sound to represent the water evaporating. Girls, why did you choose that instrument? And also, why did you choose to do it in the way that you did this? Why did you choose that particular tempo, that's the speed of your rhythm? Um, because you see when you said that when they're going up, yeah. they're quite freely. So we did it like as they're going up and taking their time. Yeah, that's right, good. Actually, today, I'm going to give you all a massive thumbs up for that because you worked really well in your groups, you cooperated well with each other, and the final product was really, really nice. I think the challenges were um, for the children to make the links between the science and the music. I think that was a big challenge, and I don't know if I maybe bit off more than I could chew with that. Um, but they, um, they actually did respond really well in the end. Uh, a lot of it was recapping on prior knowledge, so I think if I was going to use it um, again, it would be at the beginning of that topic, just to really get them into it. And it could be even a starter for several lessons, not just one lesson, but I think more, with more focus on science than anything else. They could see visually that the waterproof material, when, the, when Sarah ran through the, the river or the lake, they can see that it didn't affect her, the material in any way, but with the man who's bandaged, they can see straight away that it started absorbing the water, it started falling off. And with the man wearing the armour, the fact that he couldn't get over the log, they could see that as well. So it was a really good visual stimulus to use for them. The benefits are that the children um, are immediately involved with the lesson. Everybody in the class can understand the problem that Robinson Crusoe's having and how they go about solving that problem is then up to them. To see all the science lesson starts, go to www.teachers.tv.